Hey what's going on guys Tanmay of Simple Snippets back with another video tutorial on Java programming so this is the third video tutorial of this core java programming playlist and in this video tutorial we are going to be installing the jdk we will also glance through the netbeans ide and yes we will be running our first hello world program in java now in the previous couple of video tutorials that is the previous two video tutorials we saw the introduction of java and in the second video tutorial we also saw the difference between jdk jre and jvm so those videos are pretty theoretical if you have missed those videos you can check it out in this playlist and if you are an absolute beginner i would definitely recommend that you check out those videos first and with that being said let's get started with today's topic so as you can see on the screen i have opened up oracle website so it is the official website wherein you can download the jdk so you can see this link i'll share this link in the description of this video quickly go to this link and there you can see java se we are going to be dealing with the standard edition now we already know what is the difference between java se java ee java me and we've talked about it in the first video itself so we are going to be dealing with the java se version so you can see i'm already on the java se overview so in that just click on the downloads option now if you already have downloaded java platform then you just need the netbeans and if you are on a older version it's good but if you want you can download the jdk 9 which is the latest version and here you can see we have netbeans with jdk 8 so it's one version previous but it's good to go i am already on this jdk 8 so what you can do is you can download both of these together and even oracle suggest us to use netbeans id so we're going to use that so click on this download button you don't have to sign in or anything it's open source and it's free to download and as you can see i have already downloaded it and i also have installed the netbeans id so the installation process is pretty simple you just have to click next next and keep all the default settings you have to keep the installation path and all all same and it's already pretty much sorted out so i'm not going to go ahead with the installation process because it will just eat up our time so it's pretty simple but there is only one thing that you have to do is you have to check whether your path variable is set so what exactly is this path variable so if you've seen the previous one or two video tutorials we know that java is both compiled as well as interpreted programming language right so to invoke the compiler so the compiler is a program that compiles the high level language into a intermediate byte code in this java programming so to invoke that we have to invoke a executable file that is java c so that java c dot exe is located in your java installation folder so let me just show you where it is so when you install java so when you download that file and you just install in your program files it would be installed in the java directory so you can see jdk 1.7 so this was a previous version and you can see the date modified 05 march so today is 6th march which means i just installed it yesterday so this is the latest jdk version and then there is also jre for those corresponding versions we are looking into the jdk just go into the jdk and inside that inside the bin folder you can see there is a java c dot exe so this is that executable file which invokes the compiler and then it compiles the code so this location you can see this entire file hierarchy or this location needs to be set in that path variable so path variable is available in the settings so let's go to the settings go to my computer just right click and go to the properties you can see advanced system settings go to those in the advanced tab you can see there is a button named environment variables just click on that and here you can see environment variables right so this is user variables for tanmay sakpal 11 which is me when i am logged in and this is these are the system variables so we are looking into the system variable named path so this is that path variable that i am talking about just double click on it and there would be a list of entries which are already there now you just need to add one more entry you, need, you first need to check whether this kind of entry is there or not that is c program files java jdk slash bin now this is the exact directory where are java c dot exe and java dot exe executables are right so this is that location just copy it and if you don't have this kind of entry so let me just delete this first so let's say you don't have this entry right in this entire path variable locations so just click on new and just paste it and just hit enter and then say okay so this will set your path variable and then the next time you call java c that is when you compile a program the java program will automatically get this path from this location so this is one prerequisite that you have to do if you're doing it for the first time if you've already installed java and you've probably tried out java programming before you probably must have already done this step and you can skip this part but this is something which is very important just note that this path variable is a system variable wherein you store the path of executable files it is not just for java it is a system variable it stores different executable file location so you can see there is a list of other locations as well which have certain different executable files which are needed for their corresponding purposes 
so after doing this just get out of everything and you are pretty much good to go and i skipped the installation part because it would have taken a lot of time probably it will take a couple of minutes for installation in your system just wait for it and just install it everything with default settings and after that the way we check whether java is installed properly or not just go to command prompt just hit windows r and just type in cmd just click okay and just type in java space hyphen version and hit enter and you should get this java version and java runtime environment so you can see i am on the latest version 1.8.0.161 and now you can also check the java compiler version so let's say java c hyphen space hyphen version hit enter you should see the version number if you don't get this it probably means that you haven't set the path variable so this means that java is properly installed on your system of course you will also get the java directory in your c program files that we just saw so go to windows c drive in your program files you should get a folder named java inside that you should get that jdk the latest version and then you have all those executable files okay so we've pretty much installed java now what i'm going to do is i'm going to first create a java program that is the first hello world program in a basic notepad editor and then we'll also see that same program in netbeans id because i want to show you how to run a java program without using the netbeans id and using the java c and java executable files using the command prompt basically so quickly open up any of your text editor that you use for example sublime text or notepad plus plus i usually use notepad plus plus or sublime text because it has good highlighting and indentation and lot of other features you can also use your basic notepad so just type along with me type in public class my first class open and close curly braces inside that just say public static void main open and close round brackets inside that st string args args opening and closing square brackets again open and close brackets for the public static void main function of course i'm going to explain you each and everything about what we are typing but right now just type along with me inside that say system dot out dot print ln and again inside opening and closing round brackets double quotes type in hello world just give a semicolon at the end and just save this in any of your directory i have created a directory already and while saving it just save it with the same name that you have created the class so you can see my, i have created public class my first class over here so i'm just going to save it with the same name my first class and also it has to be case sensitive so my m capital f capital and c capital and in the save type as you just select java okay so the extension is dot java just save this as it is so you can see it it is already getting highlighted public class public static void main all these things are getting highlighted and this is because of the features of this notepad plus plus id now what you can do is go to your command prompt again type in windows r cmd now you need to go to the file location where you have saved the file okay so let me just show you where i have saved it okay you can see i have saved it in video score java setting up id and first hello world program inside that programs so just entirely copy paste this file directory so i have copy pasted this entire thing control a control c go to your command prompt type in cd which stands for change directory and just paste that entire directory and hit enter once you hit enter you can see you are inside that entire directory now where your dot java file is saved that is the my first class java is saved over here you can even see by doing ls command i suppose okay it ls doesn't work over here anyways now you are inside your program folder which means you are inside this folder using the command prompt now you have to call the compiler first right my first class dot java needs to get compiled so you will say java c space type in the entire file name my first class also with the extension dot java and hit enter and there you go we have compiled it and the way i knew that we have compiled it successfully is because we did not get any error over here we directly got the command prompt in the next line and to prove that when we compile a java file using the java c compiler or using the java compiler we get a intermediate class file which is having an extension of dot class and to prove that we can go to that folder and you can see that there is a my first class dot class file created so this was just created right now you can see the time 6 march 18 12 48 am which means it's night at my place 
Anyways, if you just open this using Notepad++, you can see some garbage written, which obviously you cannot read because this is the intermediate bytecode which is portable. So we've talked about this in the first video and we've talked about Java being portable, right? So this is that intermediate bytecode. So we haven't yet got the output. So this is one step that is compilation step. We haven't gone in the execution step. Of course, we are going to be seeing the entire execution process of a Java program in the further video, in the next video actually, wherein I'll theoretically explain the entire step-by-step -step process of what exactly happens. But right now we're just going into the practical aspect. So I just wanted to show you the dot class file. So now in order to run this program that we've already compiled, there is another command. We have to say Java space and then the class name. So my first class. And you don't have to use the extension over here. You just have to say my first class, which is the class name, which is this one inside which the void main function is existing. So I still haven't explained you all of these, but I'll explain to you in a minute. Let's see if this first program runs and there you go. You can see the output hello world, right? So which means we successfully compiled as well as executed our first program. And this was all using our basic notepad. We haven't even started off with NetBeans. So before starting off with NetBeans, let me explain to you what this program is and what are each line we have defined and what is the meaning of every line. So let me just close this. Okay. So coming to our program starting line, we have public class, my first class. So in Java, everything resides inside a class. Now, if you are a very beginner, that is, if you have no programming background and even if, and if you are not coming from a C++ background, I know this might sound a little confusing because you don't know the concept of classes and objects and object oriented programming. So what I'll do is I'll create one separate video wherein I explain the object oriented part that is classes and objects explicitly. But right now understand that in Java, everything resides inside a class and classes are sort of like templates wherein we can create our own user defined variables or also known as objects of that class. So I can create an object of my first class object and use it as a custom variable. We'll see that in further video tutorials. And I know we also need to see what is variables and data types, which will obviously come in this playlist in a couple of videos. Okay. So let's leave the details for the upcoming videos coming on to the third line. You can see we are on third line. We have public static void main. So this main is a special function which is the starting point of any execution of a Java program. So any Java program looks for this main function to start off with its execution. So there can be n number of functions over here. Okay. So this is basically a function because it has a name and the name is main. Then it has opening and closing around brackets. So this entire line is known as function prototype or function signature. The word public defines its accessibility and public means it is accessible throughout the program. So it is visible overall and we'll again get into the details of access modifiers. Static means whenever we declare a function static, it means that we do not need an object of that class. So main function does not need any object. So we did not create any object of my first class, right? And then we use that class object to call the function, right? We did not use it. So when we create a static function, we do not use the object to call that function. And void means it's return type. So this is the return type, which means that this main function is not returning us any value. We'll see this in again in detail when we go ahead and go through the functions topic right now, just understand that this is the return type of this function whose name is main and it is not returning us any value. That's why the return type is void. Then inside the round brackets, we have string args. So this string is a class which is used as a data type over here. And this args is used for taking in command line arguments. So when we ran the program, you got the output as hello world, right on the command. So we could have passed in some arguments and those arguments would be stored in this array. So these square brackets are for array. Again, we have not discussed what is an array, what are variables. So we'll get into those details right now. Just keep in mind that this is basically the starting point of any Java program or the execution point of any Java program and then coming inside this function. So this curly opening and closing braces are the starting and ending point of a function. So this is the starting point. This is the ending point. Then we have system dot out dot print ln. Now system is a class. Again, it is a predefined class, which we are directly using over here. And this out dot print ln print ln basically is a function which is used to print any value on the command prompt. Okay. So this hello world that we saw on the command prompt came from over here. If we would have printed anything else that is hello Tanmay, then this value would have been printed. Okay. So right now I'm not going ahead and doing it again because I've closed the command prompt. 
but this is where the value was being printed from and then we have the end of the class my first class so this was just an overview and i know things are not very clear as of now because we have to get into details of each and every keyword that we just saw but you'll understand it as we move along and it's going to be very easy don't worry i'll try to make it as easy as possible so this was a first hello world program and moving ahead let's see the netbeans id quickly i have already installed it even you can install it just pause this video and install it it'll take around 5 minutes go to start and netbeans id so for the first time it might take one or two minutes to load okay so when you start off this is the start page you can see there are tabs also in this netbeans id this is the start page tab then this is java application 2.java wherein i had created a test application let me just close it out if you have any recent projects it will show up over here then we have the regular tab strip that is file edit view navigate right as of now just go to the file tab click on new project yes it is going to be java right don't select java fx or anything else just select java and then inside the projects it is a java application click next then give it give your project name any name you want right now i'm just keeping it as as it is so just using the default name then you can also specify your project location again i'm keeping this default and when you hit finish all the settings will be done for you and you can see that entire code is already written for you so there is again a concept of packages packages are basically group of classes which are similar to each other we will again discuss them in detail then you have the public class java application 3 so this was the name of the project that you created java application 3 inside that again we have comments so these star values are all comments let me just remove them and then public static void main so this was the function that we created in netbeans also right and again we have string args and this was the exact function public static void main string args here you can see the square brackets are at the end but in netbeans they are at the start both are valid and here if you want let me just copy this entire code from from notepad and just paste it over here if i save this and if i want to directly compile and run this you can see there is a run project button over here just click on it and instead of showing the output in the command prompt you can see java application 3 run is happening and there you go you also got the output so you see hello hello tanmay is being printed over here so you don't have to go to the command prompt type in java c and again type in java and give the entire file name so this netbeans id makes it easy for us to compile and run java applications and java projects and java source code so on the left side you have the projects so currently we are in the java 3 project inside that we have source packages and then inside that we have package java application 3 so you can see over here package java application 3 inside that package we have our class that is public class java application 3 so this is the dot java file if you want to see this just right click on this and go to the properties and you can go to the project folder in explorer just open your explorer paste this and you'll go inside the java application 3 so our java 3 that is java application 3 dot java file is always going to be inside the source folder so inside the source folder we have again one package this is java application 3 package and inside that you can see we have java application 3 dot java so when we run this project you must be wondering where is the dot class file right so that class file goes inside this build directory so inside this build you can see classes inside those classes we have again java application 3 so this is where the dot class file exists so if you open this with notepad you will again see some garbage value right so this is the basic hierarchy of netbeans it's pretty easy to understand and it's not necessary for you to understand everything as of now for now this is more than enough for you to understand the basic hierarchy and where the java file is where the class file is and how to run a basic java project So this was all for this video tutorial. I know a lot of things are to be discussed in detail, especially the programming part, and of course we'll go through all of them. In the next video, I'll probably explain you theoretically entire process of execution of a Java program because there are two phases. That is the compiler phase and the execution phase, wherein the interpreter is invoked, and it is much different compared to the execution process of a C++ program. So I'll explain to you in detail, and that video is going to be very important in terms of theoretical understanding, and it is also a must-watch because it is usually asked in exams as well as interview questions. So don't miss that video. It will probably be just after this video. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever I upload that video. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as usual, subscribe to this channel if you haven't. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.